Math 230, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta, and this is the review for exam four. So we'll call this review four. I'm going to work out some review exercises from chapter six from the book. If you have not done them, you might want to pause the video to see if you can do those chapter six problems. So let's get going. So here it goes. A poodle has four leashes, eight collars, and ten sweaters. How many ways can the poodle's owner select one of each for the poodle to wear on a walk? Okay, so there's three events. The first thing you want to do is pick a leash. One leash, then one collar, and then a sweater. Okay, how many choices do we have for leashes? We have four, and for collars, eight, and for sweaters, ten. We use the product rule for counting. Multiply those numbers together and get our answer. 4 times 8 is 32. 32 times 10 is 320. So that's how you do problem number 1. Problem number 2. Yogi's picnic basket contains two types of lunch meat and four kinds of bread. Boo Boo's picnic basket contains five additional types of lunch meat and three additional kinds of bread. Yogi and Boo Boo. So I guess this is referring to a cartoon from long, long time ago. How many ways can Yogi and Boo Boo select one type of meat and one type of bread to make a sandwich? So really, when you're looking at the slots, you're selecting type of meat and a type of bread. Well look, we have Yogi's picnic basket and it probably wasn't always his picnic basket and he just took it. Contains two types of meat, so two meat and four kinds of bread. Boo Boo. Boo Boo's picnic basket contains five additional types of lunch meat, so 5M, and three additional kinds of bread. So we're not just going to go four times two times three times five. We are going to say, well, how many choices do I have for meat? Seven choices. How did I get the seven? Well, there's two here and five there. How many choices do I have for um, bread? seven choices for bread as well. So I'm going to go seven times seven. That's going to give me 49. And now for the puzzle. Two puzzles actually. The first one being put the numbers one through eight in the boxes so that no consecutive numbers are touching, even diagonally. And that's a classic puzzle. And the second puzzle is fill in the blanks. So we have W's and O's. So what goes in those blanks? Let's go ahead and do problem number three. Consider four letter words to be formed by using the letters O, L, I, V, E. Four letter words, they don't have to be real words that you find in the dictionary. You can think of this as passwords. Um, four letters. So this is what we're looking at to do our problems. Something that looks like that. How many different words can be formed if repetitions are allowed? Well, how many choices do I have for the first slot? One, two, three, four, five. 
repetitions are allowed, so I can, you know, like if I put an O here, I can also put an O there. So I have five choices for the second slot, five choices for the third slot, and five choices for the fourth slot. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those fives together. Five times five is 25, times five is 125. And you multiply that by 5, you end up getting 625 for your answer. How many different words can be formed if repetitions are not allowed? Okay, so these are four letter words. Okay, so how many choices do I have for the first slot? Well, I have five choices. So I'm going to go ahead and put a E there. There were five choices. That means I've used up the E. Okay, how many choices do I have for the second slot? Well, you can count them. There's four. So maybe I'll put the I there. Why am I crossing them out? Because repetitions are not allowed. I cannot put another E there. Now that I've used up an E and an I, how many choices do I have for the third slot? Well, you can count them. One, two, three. So let's go put an L there. And how many choices do I have for the last spot? Well, just two. So maybe we can put and over there. So really we're supposed to multiply this together. 5 times 4 is 20. 3 times 2 is 6. So I just have to go 20 times 6. 20 times 6 is 120. And that is how you do problem number 4. Oh, by the way, there's 120 words that fit this description. One of these words happens to be E-I-L-O. Okay? So if you wanted to list them all out, you'd have 119 more to list out. This part that I put in green has no effect. It's not part of the answer. It just helps me get that answer. Problem number five. Consider four letter words to be formed by using the letters O-L-I-V-E. Okay, so the same as before. Four letter words. How many different words whose last letter is not E can be formed if repetitions are not allowed? So repetitions are not allowed. It says the last letter is not E. So there's your restriction. So that's not E. You do your restriction first. And so how many choices do I have for this restriction? I have actually one, two, three, four choices. Why? Because it says the last letter is not E. Now, because repetitions are not allowed, I, I'm going to go ahead and put one of the um, letters up here. So I'll put an I there. I'll cross out the I. Okay, now I go out to the front slot and say, well, how many choices do I have for this? Well, there's no restrictions there, so let's just look up here. One, two, three, four. We cannot put an I there. So, four there. So maybe I'll put a V. And then how many choices do I have for the second slot? Um, three. One, two, three. Which maybe I'll put an E there. But I had three choices. And after using up the E, I only have two choices for this slot. I could put the letter up there, but I don't need to because now I know what I have to do. I have to go 4 times 3, which is 12. 
So 4 times 3 is 12, and then 2 times 4 is 8. So 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 times 1, and then we add 1, so it looks like 96 is our answer. So that's how you do these kinds of problems. If you've been doing your homework, this should all look familiar. Okay, we're going to change it around for the next three problems. Instead of counting words, we are going to be considering three digit whole numbers to be formed by using the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is what I'm looking at, three digit numbers from these guys. How many different odd numbers can be formed if repetitions are not allowed? Okay, so odd numbers happen to be what we're looking for. Now, where's the restriction for if a number is odd, the restriction is the last slot. I'll go ahead and just repeat these numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's go ahead and start our problem here. I have to do my restriction first. How many choices do I have for the restriction? They say odd numbers, so it has to be an odd digit. One, three, and five qualify, so that's one, two, three choices. And um, let's go ahead and put the five there. I'll cross out the five. Why? Because repetitions are not allowed. And now we move over to the front slot. How many choices do I have for this front slot? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Five choices. So let's put a two there. Okay, the middle slot. This is the last slot that we have to put a number under. How many choices do I have for that? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. So my answer is going to be gotten by going five times four times three. Five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60. 60 is the answer. Let's go ahead and do problem number seven. How many different numbers whose middle digit is not two or four can be formed if repetitions are allowed? Okay, so we're looking at three digit numbers. Reps are allowed. The restriction is right here. The middle digit is not two or four. So we can say that this is not two or four. So this is another way we can we can do these problems is actually write the description above the slot. Okay, I'm gonna do my restriction first. How many choices do I have for this slot? So I mean I could put a one, a three, a five, and a six there. Okay, one of those. So that's four choices. Okay, now that I've put something there, like maybe a six or a one, I can have repetitions if I want. So I have six digits that they're allowing me to pick from. So I put a six there, and then also a six right there. So this gives me 24, because six times four is 24, times six. So let's see, 24, I carry, we carry the 2 and then 12, 13, 14. So I multiply those guys together, I get 144 as the answer. Let's move on to problem number 8. Consider three digit whole numbers to be formed by using digits 1 through 6. How many different numbers greater than 200 can be formed if repetitions are not allowed? 
So reps are not allowed. Where is the restriction? Numbers greater than 200. Now, what slot is that going to affect? Well, it's going to affect the first slot. Because if we had like 516, we know that's greater than 200 because of the 5. So let's go ahead and see how many choices I have for this. So if the number has to be greater than 200, you can put a 6 there, or a 5, or a 4, or a 3. You can even put a 2 there, because if you put a 2 there and then you don't have zeros for a choice, it's going to be at least 2, 1, something. So it's going to be greater than 200. So um, you just cannot put a 1 there. So that makes this restriction have five choices. Because repetitions are not allowed, I'm going to go ahead and put one of the choices there. Let's put a six there. Now this is arbitrary. Maybe when you're doing the problem, you decided to put like a three there. And this is not part of the answer, the green part. Let's go ahead and now move over here. Repetitions are not allowed. How many choices do I have for this middle slot? There's no restrictions. Looks like five choices. So maybe I'll put a two there. And how many choices do I have for this last slot? One, two, three, four. So this gives me 20 times five which is 100. So let's continue to do more counting problems. Dwayne read a girl's number on his arm. When he got sweaty in his PE class, the number smeared. Now all he can read is five, four, six, and then there's a question mark, so we don't know what that one is. And there's a one, and then another question mark, and a zero, and there's an extension on this number. Two, blank, blank, three. I mean, we could put lines under these as well. So maybe I'll do that. Um, how many possible numbers could Dwayne have to call to talk to the girl? So these ones that already have numbers are like restrictions, okay? I mean like this last slot has to be a three and this slot has to be a two. So under all those are just gonna be ones and I'm using the product rule these are all multiplied. Well, how many choices do I have for this slot? Um, they didn't say anything about no repetitions and numbers can be repeated in phone numbers. So there's 10 there, 10 choices. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there's also 10 choices here and 10 choices here and 10 choices on that slot. So really what I'm doing is I'm going 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is a one followed by four zeros. So the, the, um, they ask how many possible numbers Dwayne might have to call 10,000. Okay, our next question. How many bit strings of length eight are there? Okay, so bit string of length eight, I'm gonna put eight slots. Well, bit strings only have zeros and ones, so how many choices do I have for the first slot? Two, and for the second slot? Two, and for the third slot? Two, two's all the way down the line. So here's an eight, and here's another eight. Eight times eight is 64. So 
that's 64, and then we have times 4. So we have 16, carry the 1, 24, 25, so 256. And bit strings of length 8, that's 8 bits, that's called a byte, and this is kind of how we were studying ASCII in the last section, 256 certainly is enough for all the symbols that we need, letters of the alphabet, numbers, punctuation, etc. Let's go ahead and do problem number 11. A certain teacher makes all his students choose passwords. Sounds familiar. But this is different here, consisting of two lowercase letters, followed by two digits. So this is a letter, letter, digit, digit. That's how the password is. So maybe your password is like, like, J V seven seven. Okay, so there's an example of one of the passwords. There doesn't seem to be any restrictions here. Well, the restrictions are this, but I mean like it doesn't say the last digit is a uh, nine. Um, so they ask how many choices are there if repetitions are not allowed? Oh, look at this. See, I didn't read the question all the way. That's not allowed. Why? Because there's a repetition of seven. So the teacher would give it back to me and say, come up with another password. So maybe I'd go like that. Okay, so repetitions are not allowed. Let's see if we can do this problem. How many letters of the alphabet are there? These are lowercase letters. There are 26. Now, I use one of the letters of the alphabet. I cannot use it here. So here I would only have 25 choices. Digits. I have 10 choices for digits, 0 through 9. We cannot have repetitions, so the next digit cannot be the one that I put there, so this is a 9 there. Okay, so now it looks like I've got, looks like I've got to multiply some numbers together. Um, let's go ahead and multiply 26 times 25. I'm doing this old school here. So 30, carry the 3. 10, 11, 12, 13. And then 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So there's a 0 here, a 5 there, and a 6 there. So 650, this gives me 650 times 9. I'm going to do the multiply by 9 next. So 650 times 9, 0. 45 carry the 4. 54, 9 times 6, plus 4 is 58. Okay, so it looks like my answer is going to be this. It's going to be 5850. Okay, that's when I multiplied 26 times 25 times 9, and then I'm going to multiply it by 10, so that puts another zero there. So the answer is 58,500. So there it is. Number 12. Certain California license plates have one digit, followed by three letters, followed by three digits. Find the number of possible plates with the following pattern that looks like this. So why don't we go ahead and I'll put seven slots here. There's a two there, an A there, V, and a six. So those guys right there are the restrictions.
So there's only one choice to put a 2 there, and one way you can put an A there, and one way you can put a V there, and one way you can put a 6 there. Um, there doesn't seem to be any other restrictions besides those. Find the number of possible plates. So how many choices do I have? This one here has to be a letter. So there are 26 choices for that slot. Well, this slot has to be a digit. And there are 10 digits. And the last slot has to be a digit as well. So there are 10 digits. So I'm going to go 26 times 10 times 10. So that's 26 with two zeros there. 2600. That is the answer to number 12. Let's continue. Problem number 13. 4 factorial, 3 factorial. So that's multiplying. We do not want to write this as 12 factorial. The factorial is stronger in terms of the order of operations. So 4 factorial, what is that? That is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So this guy right here is 24. This guy right here is 6. 24 times 6. 24. And we carry the 2. And then we go 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. So it looks like I'm getting 144 for the answer. So there it is. Here's another factorial problem. Evaluate. And then it says 8 factorial. Now normally without the hint you'd have to go 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 with multiplication. But they're actually helping us out. 8 factorial is what I said. It's 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but 8, and then look, it's times 7 factorial, which they gave us. So this is 8 times 50, 40. So I'll go ahead and do that multiplication right over here. Whoa, what happened? 50, 40. So we'll use some white out here. So 50, 40 times 8. What do I have? I have a 0, and then I have a 32, and then I have a 40. So this gives me 40,320 for 8 factorial. So that's how you do that problem there. Okay, so now we're going to continue. We have problems 15 and 16. Combinations, no reps. Problem number 15. 30 choose 2. 30 choose 2. It's a combination. Combinations are found on Pascal's triangle. However, I don't want to go all the way down to row 30. To do this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and use the formula. The formula for this is you sit, you put the first number on the top, 30 factorial, and the smaller number, the second number on the bottom, 2 factorial. You go 30 minus 2, which is 28, and you go 28 factorial. So I'm going to um, Write out 30 factorial on the top, but not all the way down to 1. I'm going to go 30, 29, 28 factorial. I stop at the bigger number. And that is 30 factorial. 
This is over 28 factorial. And then 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. So the 28 factorials completely cancel. And now what I want to do is cancel the 2 and the 30. And I'm stuck with doing 29 times 15. Uh, 5 times 9, 45. Carry the 4, and then 10 plus 4, that's 14. And then we have 1 times 9, and 1 times 2. We add those together. 5, 9 plus 4, 13, 2, 3, 4. So this is 430. Five. Combinations. So 30 choose 2, those are combinations without repetitions. Now here's one, it says 12 choose 12. Now this one, you may be able to use the Pascal's triangle. My Pascal's triangle only goes up to 10. I could add two more rows. I'm just going to go ahead and do this using the formula. It's not going to be as bad. 12 factorial over 12 factorial times 0 factorial. The bottom numbers have to add up to the top number. 0 factorial happens to be 1. And 12 factorial over itself, anything over itself, is just 1. I would have still been working on row 11 on this Pascal's triangle here had I went to had I gone to use the Pascal's triangle. We will still use Pascal's triangle for some other combinations in this review, but on these ones I use the formula. Let's go ahead and do a few more problems here. Evaluate these permutations. And in this class we agreed that we would say 9 pick 3. So the way I do permutations is I just do a countdown. The countdown starts at 9 and the 3 means there's 3 numbers in the countdown. So 9 times 8 times 7. So 9 times 8 happens to be 72. 72 times 7 is 504. A number we've seen from time to time in lecture. Evaluate this permutation. So we're not going to go to Pascal's triangle for permutations. Oh, there is no triangle for this. We just do countdown unless we get a problem like this. And if we get a problem that where there's a zero as the second coordinate, what well, we could do formulas and all that stuff, or we could just remember that the answer to this is one. So that's the only memorizing one you have to do. And it's like walking into an ice cream shop, a no-rep ice cream shop with five flavors and ordering nothing. There's one way to do that. So these are permutations without reps. And the um, previous two problems were combinations without reps. So now we're going to get into the, the problems where we have to see whether order matters or not. And correlate that to... Uh, um, permutations and combinations. A health food enthusiast wants to make a smoothie. The ingredients she has available are tofu, strawberries, orange juice, carrot juice, wheat, grass juice, and bananas. So how many was that? There's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to make six X's. How many smoothies can she make if she uses equal amounts of four different ingredients? Okay, so here are the ingredients that she has, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, and we counted those. So she's going to select four of these. Now let's circle them and select them. You're going in the blender. You're going in the blender you're going in the blender and you're going in the blender. Was I putting different labels 
on the ones I was circling. No, I was saying the same thing, so this means that order does not matter. Just putting it in the blender. So order doesn't matter, it's a combination. And we're going to say 6 choose 4. Now instead of using the formula on this, I'm going to go to Pascal's triangle, go to row 6 and count over 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. The answer is 15. Now in this class, you can just write that as an answer. You don't have to say 15 smoothies. You don't have to write a sentence. This is a math class, so we just, there's a number that's good enough for this class. Let's go ahead and do our next problem. In a race involving eight runners, how many ways can first, second, and third place be decided, assuming there is no tie? So you have eight runners. Let me draw them all. How many ways can first, second, and third be decided? So, like, let's say this, this guy's first. He's going to end up winning the race. And then second. And then third. Did I put different labels on the ones I was circling? And the answer is yes. I was saying first, second, third, which means order matters. Now, when order matters, that makes this thing a permutation. And we had eight runners, so we're going to say eight, pick three. So eight, pick three, we do the countdown. Eight, seven, six. Countdown starts at eight. There's three numbers in the countdown. Eight times seven is 56. 56 times six, okay. 6 times 6 is 36, 33, so it looks like it's going to be 336 for our answer. There it is. Let's continue. Dad needs one kid to clean the gutters, one kid to clean the car, and one kid to pick up dog poop. How many ways can he select three of his ten kids to complete these tasks? So there's ten kids. There they are. And I'm going to circle three of them. Now as I circle them, listen. Am I putting different labels on them? So this kid right here, you're going to clean the gutters, clean the car, pick up dog poop. Certainly that was using different labels when I was circling those three, which tells you that order matters. Order matters, permutation, the guy had 10 kids, so this is 10 pick three. 10 pick three, the countdown starts at 10. And we have three numbers in our countdown. Nine, eight. Nine times eight is 72. 72 times 10, we put a zero there, and our answer is 720. Next problem. Frozen yogurt shop has 12 different toppings. So I, there's 12 toppings right there, different. How many ways can you add two toppings to your yogurt? So you're going on the yogurt, you're going on the yogurt. Okay, so both of those have the same label, which means Order does not matter, which tells you this is going to be combination. It's going to be 12 choose 2. Now 
I know my Pascal's triangle does not go up to, to 12, but I'm going to make it go partly up to 12. So we have that. Um, 55. This one right. Let's see. 1, 12, and then this is 66. <laughs> so there it is. There's row 12, and since this was see if we mess up the paper here. This is 12 choose 2. I get a row 12. I point to the first entry and move over 2. I get 66 for the answer. We could have used the formula as well, but I figured I only had a few numbers to put on this and that wasn't as much work. Let's go ahead and do the next problem. Problem number 23. Problem 23. How many different committees consisting of at least five people can be selected from a group of nine people? So we have this word right here. We have at least five people. What does at least five people mean? It means five people or more. So five people or six people or seven people or eight people, or nine people. So this is one of those at least problems. So you break this up into five problems, and the ors are going to become plus signs. So you have nine people. How many ways can you select? five for a committee. Well, that would be nine choose five. Then we have this or, which is a plus. This one is exactly six people on that committee, would, which would be nine choose six plus nine choose seven plus nine choose eight plus nine choose nine. So what am I going to do on this one? I'm going to use Pascal's triangle, row 9. You know what? I think I'll go like this. Row 9 can be seen right there. And so 9 choose 5. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 126. 9 choose 6. 9 choose 7, that's the 36. 9 choose 8, which is right there. And 9 choose 9. So the pens are pointing, hopefully the camera's getting that all right, the pens are pointing to the numbers in the triangle that correspond to these combinations. So this is 126 plus 84 plus 36 plus 9 plus 1. So that's what Pascal's triangle gives us. And what I really should have done is, is wrote these vertically. I'm going to do that right here. 126, 84, 36, I'm just going to write 9 plus 1 as 10, so I don't have to worry about writing out. So I have, this is, I add this, 10, 16, carry the 1. We have 10 from the 8 and the 2, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, carry the 1. And then I have 1, 2. So this gives me 2, 56. I know I've seen that answer before. I think that was the answer to problem number 10 with the bit strings. But I mean, that, that was a coincidence. So we have just done our at least problem that has combinations. The Pascal's triangle is very helpful here. Flip a coin seven times. How many different ways can the outcome have exactly? So here's an exactly. Five heads. Well, this one's just going to be 7 choose 5. 
This is like a problem from like the first chapter. So let's look at seven choose five on Pascal's triangle. Go to row seven and count over. One, two, three, four, five. The answer is 21. A few more problems in this review and then we'll be done. In how many ways can a family with five children have at most four girls? So what does at most four girls mean? It means four girls or less. So it can go all the way down to zero girls or one girl or two girls or three girls or four girls. Almost ran off the paper there. So we do these as one, two, three, four, five separate problems right here. Five children, how many ways could there be zero girls? Well, if, using choose talk, we would say five choose zero. But we might already know there was only one way that could happen. They're all boys. Plus one girl, exactly one girl with five children. This would be five choose one. Plus two girls, five choose two. Plus three girls, five choose three. Plus four girls, five choose four. Where is this going to show up on? Row 5 of Pascal's triangle, which is right here. So here is 5 choose 0, 5 choose 1 is 5, 5 choose 2, 5 choose 3, and 5 choose 4. So this gives me 1 plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5. So when I add that all up, I end up getting 10, 20, 31. 31 is the answer. And now, if you actually were listening to my lecture when we did problems like this, I said that sometimes in a statistics class, especially when you have a problem like this where you have to add up most of the row of Pascal's triangle, you can just say, oh, well, that whole row adds up to the sum of the whole row is 2 to the fifth, which is 32. And then you would do the one that you don't want and go 32 minus that, which is 31. Now, this one worked out just as good, but just know if you're going to statistics, they may do stuff like that. Let's continue. A class contains five boys and eight girls. How many ways are there to form a four class member committee consisting of two boys and two girls? So now this is the deal where we um, put our slots and you know, you're gonna select a boy. You're gonna select the boys first, I guess the two boys, and then um, you'll select the two girls. Okay, well, how many ways can you um, choose two boys from five boys? Well, that would be five choose two. And how many ways can you choose two girls from eight girls? That would be eight choose two. Because these are two events and you do this one first and then this one second, we use the product rule, we multiply those together. So we got to look at Pascal's triangle again. Let's look at Pascal's triangle. Five choose two. Here's row five. One, two. That one's ten. Eight choose two. Here's row eight. One, two. That's twenty-eight. Okay, so twenty-eight times ten is. 28 with a zero after it, 280, and that is the answer to problem number 26. 
Okay, so problem number 27. Angela has five pairs of athletic shoes, nine pairs of casual shoes, and three pairs of dress shoes. Since not all of the shoes will fit her, oh, will, will fit her, uh, will fit in her closet, she wants to give to the thrift store two pairs of the athletic shoes, four pairs of the casual shoes, and one pair of dress shoes. And how many ways can she do this? So this is just like the boy-girl problem, except now we have three groups here. We have athletic, casual, dress. So let me go ahead and put three slots. Athletic, casual, dress. And so there's three events. The first event is picking um, two pairs of athletic shoes from the five pairs. So five, choose two. Multiplied by, now we're gonna pick the casual shoes. Nine, choose four. And now the last event is picking out the dress shoes. Three, choose one. We'll move this down here, make room for Pascal's triangle. Five choose two. Here's row five. One, two, that's a 10. Nine choose four, row nine. One, two, three, four. This is a 126. Three choose one. One, and so that we move over one and we land on three. I'm gonna go 126 times three. We're done with this Pascal's triangle. 126 times 3, 18, carry the 1, and then 6, 7, and then we have a 3. So this is 378, that's these guys right here. This is 378 times 10, which is going to be 378 with a 0 after it, or 3780. And that completes problem number 27. Let's go ahead and do the puzzles. Okay, our first puzzle. If I can find it. Oh yeah, here it is. It's this one right here. Can we put some numbers in those boxes? I'm pretty sure we can. Um, the solution, and I think there's more than one solution because there's symmetry involved. I think this one gets a six, four, two, eight, one, seven, five, three. And let's check this. So the numbers should not be consecutive numbers should not be touching. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's probably more than one unique answer on that. Go ahead and do the next puzzle. This kind of reminds you of the Pascal's triangle here. Um, so what goes in those blanks? Well, here's the deal, and some of you might not like this because you've tried to figure it out, and it was it's it's challenging until you see the answer, and you're like, oh, okay. Look at there's two O's, and right above them is an O. There's two W's here, and right above them is an O. There's two O's, and right above them is an O. So it seems like when the symbols are the same, you have an O above them. And when the symbols are different, look, those are different, there's a W. Those are different, there's a W. But these are different, there's a W. So we can keep doing that, so different W, same O, different W, different W, different W. W, so I'm just checking it out, same, same. Okay, so look, those are the same, so there's an O there. And these are different, which means a W goes there. Same, it's an O. Okay, different, W. Those are different, W. And then those are the same, which 
says we put an O there. So that's how you complete that puzzle. Now let me show you one more thing because it's a review and sometimes I'd like to show you some neat things on the review. Some of you may have seen this already, um, but maybe you haven't seen the last thing that I'm going to show you. Let's just get a blank piece of paper here. So what I have is a strip of, of paper here. Okay. What I'm going to do with this strip, I have double stick tape, but you don't need double stick tape. I just felt like it would be easier to do this on camera with this. Is Instead of making like a loop like this, I'm going to give this a half a twist and go like this. This guy right here is called a Mobius strip. Now even though the original strip of paper had two sides, so if you are a little ant and you want to go to the other side, you have to cross a boundary to get to the other side. This Mobius strip only has one side. So if you're a little ant and you want to go to the other side, all you have to do is walk along there and you'll be on the other side without crossing that boundary. Try making one of these and then taking out a pen and keep drawing on the pen until you get back to where you started. You'll be amazed. I'm going to cut this Mobius strip in half. Let me just show you what happens. Look what you get. You get this big loop. Okay. I think this loop has two sides. I'm not sure. You, you could verify that, but it's a big loop. So it's not like when you cut just a regular loop that's not a Mobius strip in half, you get two things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another Mobius strip. This one, I saw this one in college and I was completely amazed. Give it a half twist. And what I'm going to do with this Mobius strip is I'm going to go ahead and cut it one third from the edge without cutting my finger. Okay. So one third from the edge. The funny thing about this is as I go around, I come back to my starting point, but now I'm on, I'm on the other side. So I don't know. It's probably hard to notice in the camera and I'm going to keep just going. Now it looks like I'm just going down the middle of something. I'm coming back to where I started. And look what I get. I get two interlinked loops. The first one here being a little Mobius strip and then this one I think is two sided. So this is a branch of math called topology. Just thought I'd show you some of these. Study hard for your exam. Have a good day.